The following video is an example of a proper traffic pattern for runway 27, left traffic in Fargo, North Dakota, by Ryan Anderson, a flight instructor and owner of Cirrus Services Incorporated. The traffic pattern along with the descriptions given are specific to the Piper Archer, but the principles remain the same for many aircraft in the same class. Keep in mind this video was shot on an ideal day. Pilots will need to make corrections for winds and density altitude with power settings and headings to maintain a nice rectangular pattern, proper altitude and airspeeds in less than ideal conditions. Crosswind landings as well as common errors and how to correct them will be covered in other videos. Once clearance has been obtained, line up on the runway centerline and smoothly advance the throttle to full RPM. At 60 knots, rotate and establish a proper climb pitch to achieve 76 knots indicated airspeed. 76 knots is your best rate of climb, or VY. This pitch will be right around 8 degrees nose high on the attitude indicator. Once you have established the pitch, look out the window and take notice of where the horizon is. You want to keep this pitch during the entire climb. Remember that in most circumstances, definitely in this circumstance, your pitch is what determines your airspeed. This is the upwind leg of your traffic pattern. Your attention should be balanced between watching your instruments and outside references with the majority of your time looking out the window. Remember that your airspeed indicator is your most important instrument in the pattern. Failure to maintain a proper airspeed could result in a stall at low altitude. That stall may be unrecoverable. Also pay attention to other signs such as hearing the engine slow in RPM or an excessive pitch high attitude. Once you have reached 500 feet AGL, in the case of Fargo that would be 1,400 feet above sea level, fuel pump and landing lights should be switched off. Make sure that you check the fuel pressure after turning the fuel pump off. Next, retract the flaps. It is very important that you keep your pitch attitude when the flaps are retracted. The tendency is for the nose to come down when you retract the flaps, so you will need to add a little more back pressure or trim. It is best to simply add a little back pressure for this, as while you are in pattern work, when you are trimmed for straight and level portions, no to very little trim changes need to occur. A turn to your crosswind leg can happen any time after you reach 500 feet AGL. Once you are at pattern altitude, we use 1,900 feet, begin pitching down until your airspeed reaches 95 knots and then reduce power to 2,100 RPM and assure you are trimmed for level flight. If you have kept your climb at the best rate of climb, or 76 knots, you should be reaching pattern altitude right about the time you should be turning your downwind leg of the pattern. Try to keep your downwind leg between one mile and one and a half miles away from the runway of intended landing in this airplane. If you have not received a landing clearance or are cleared for the option yet, do not be afraid to ask for it. Simply report your position to tower and they will let you know what they want you to do. Once the landing clearance has been obtained, turn your fuel pump and landing light on. ATC's call out with the clearance can be used as your checklist to do so. It is also a visual reminder that you have a landing clearance. Just in case, never be hesitant to ask and make certain that you have a landing clearance prior to landing. Upon reaching directly across from the numbers on the runway of intended landing, otherwise known as a beam the numbers, reduce your power to 1,500 RPM and let the nose come down as it naturally will, then lower the flaps to the first notch, which is 10 degrees. Make sure you do not let the airplane pitch back up when you extend flaps. Look out the window and keep the same nose low pitch you had by adding a bit of forward pressure to the yoke. This will slow you down to around 85 knots in the proper glide path and the pressure on the yoke required to maintain the pitch attitude will subside. When you are 45 degrees from the intended touchdown point, you will be ready to turn your base leg. Take a look at the runway to determine how you are situated on the glide path. If you have kept your descent pitch, you should be looking good right about now. Around your midfield base leg, 
you should be reaching 500 feet AGL. So add one more notch of flaps or to your 25 degree flap setting. You will again need to add some forward pressure to the yoke to keep from ballooning up or flattening out. Keep that sight picture out the window looking the same as it did before you added flaps. This configuration, while maintaining the glide path, should put you right at 75 knots. If all is right on the money turning final, you should start to see one red light on the Vassy. By the time you are established on your final, there should be one or two red lights visible on the Vassy. The runway should only appear to get bigger as you get closer, but until you are directly over the runway, it should remain in the same position of the windshield. Imagine a target being on your windshield and keeping your intended touchdown point right on that bullseye. Make sure to work on maintaining the extended center line of the runway as well as your glide path. If you are low on the glide path, add a bit of power. Leveling off will only slow you down too much. If you find yourself too high, remove power until you again reach your glide path, then add the power back. As you cross the fence of the airport, the airplane should be slowed down to around 75 knots. On the glide path, extend the flaps the last notch to the 40 degree position. Again, make sure you keep your pitch or you will get too high on your glide path and the airplane will get way too slow at a very low altitude. Remaining on the glide path will bring your airspeed down to around 65 knots. Crossing the threshold of the runway, bring your power back to idle and let the nose naturally come down to maintain that 65 knots. At roughly 10 feet off the ground, begin a flare. Remember that the flare is typically many subtle but rapid adjustments to your pitch attitude. Do not over control. Try to keep your airplane off the ground for as long as you can, as close to the runway as you can. This should keep your flare proper and let you touch down nicely on the mains first and then let that nose wheel come down nice and gentle. On a full stop landing it is permissible to leave the runway at any point unless instructed otherwise. Do not taxi on to another runway without clearance. Once you have crossed the hold short off the runway, make sure to stop and get a taxi clearance if you have not yet received one. Perform your after landing checklist and proceed to parking. Now let's take another look at that same traffic pattern uninterrupted and in total. At the end of this pattern the landing touchdown will be repeated a few times in order for you to get the sight picture in your mind as far as what it is supposed to look like when you are landing. Remember there is no substitute for a well-trained pilot when it comes to safety in the air. Stay safe and enjoy your flying.